Bonjour les amis and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I am a professional artist and illustrator. And today's video is going to be a tutorial for how to create these amazing Valentine's Day watercolor roses. Um, this video is actually really great if you are starting out with watercolors and just getting your feet wet because it's really easy and it's basically like a big doodle. So if you're interested in learning how to do it, keep watching. So to start off, I'm using Arches hot press paper and my Windsor Newton, uh, Windsor and Newton paints uh, in Windsor Red Deep, as well as a beautiful opera rose that I have from Daniel Smith. So I'm going to squeeze these out into my palette. Um, and as far as brushes are concerned, I'm going to be using a number 16 brush from the Princeton Heritage line. So let's get these paints started um, by activating them with water, get a nice consistency going. And I'm going to start by creating, actually, I'm going to start right in the middle of my paper. And with the tip of my brush, I'm going to create a very, very tiny little U shape, which is going to be for the center of the rose. And um, it's actually really simple. Once you've created that little U shape, then you can start building these curves around it. So you're just wrapping these C type uh, curves around this central U shape. So they spiral outwards and as you get towards the outer edges of the flower you can apply more pressure on your brush. So as you can see right here I'm applying a little bit more pressure and you can vary your stroke weights a little bit so that helps it look a little bit more natural. So you can alternate between using the very tip like I am here and then pressing down and then releasing um, as you reach the end of your curve. So now that we have one, we will start um, creating another one. So as you create these roses, you can alternate between the opera rose um, and the red. So that's what's going to help build this beautiful sense of color in this piece is alternating between um, the two different colors that we have. And so that'll help give it a little bit of an ombre effect within each flower. So again, I'm using the same principles that I did for the first rose with these uh, very small shapes in the middle. So the very concentric rings and then gradually expanding outwards and making those brush strokes a lot thicker as you get around the outer edges. And you don't have to be perfect here. I mean, this is a more abstract interpretation of a rose. We're not getting into botanical illustrations here. It's really just supposed to be fun and relaxing and, um, you know, and a more graphic approach to a bouquet of roses, which you'll soon see. And one of the wonders of watercolor is allowing the paint and the pigments to dissipate. So try as much as possible, I know it's hard, to avoid um, overworking areas. So you really just, you know, set the, set the brush stroke down with intention and then let the colors bleed and let the colors do what they're going to do without, you know, trying to micromanage it. My philosophy with pretty much everything relating to art is that in order to create balance, you want to create contrast in different ways. So this could mean contrast between two colors or, or various colors going from, let's say, pink to red. But it can also mean contrast as far as values. So going from dark to light, as well as scale, so small to large. So what this means for this painting is that I am going to do areas where you have much darker areas of roses, um, smaller and larger so building that sense of balance through um, creating those areas of contrast I hope that's not too much of a mouthful but um, you know as you'll see as I start to develop more of these roses throughout then you'll see that they're not all uniform in size and in color they're going to vary a lot and that's what's going to build that really nice um, balance I keep saying the word balance but um, there's no better word for it while your paint is still wet, you can always go back into certain areas and add a little bit more pigment to, um, to darken certain areas. And so that's what I'm doing on this big rose. I am, however, resisting the urge to overwork and to, you know, over perfect. I'm a very type A kind of perfectionist person by nature. So, um, you know, I, I tend to want to go into the details of something and want to perfect it over and over again. But especially with watercolors, it's an exercise in self-restraint and, um, and allowing that water and the pigment to go where it wants to and it's actually amazing how much your brain can fill in the blanks for what you actually don't put on paper so um, sometimes it's a good idea to step away for a little bit and then come back and then reevaluate which I'm not doing here since we're doing this together but um, you know that's a nice practice to get into as well 
So I didn't really plan this composition to begin with. I'm just winging it as I go. Um, and so, you know, as I'm, as I'm moving around on the painting, I'm adding smaller areas of roses, larger areas. And it's kind of like a big doodle, you know, like you're just going with the flow and um, wherever you see negative space that you want to fill, you can add a rose. Before we keep going, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you're enjoying this channel. It really helps me with being able to grow it and create more amazing content for you guys. So with that said, let's keep going. So I'm pretty happy with this diagonal composition. So now I'm going to add some leaves with, believe it or not, I'm not going to go with a green, but I'm going to go with a blue. So this is called Lunar Blue by um, Daniel Smith. Pretty much any cool blue will work for this. So you could use an indigo or a, a Prussian blue. And um, what I do is I mix it with a little bit of the opera rose or the red to get a sense of unity for the color. So if you want to get your colors to look more harmonious and for them to come together in a way that's very cohesive. I always recommend involving all the colors that you're using on your palette throughout the entire painting. So even though these leaves are, you know, not red or pink, um, having a touch of them in there builds that sense of unity in the painting. Um, so as far as leaves are concerned, it's really simple. You just put down the point of your brush, um, then apply a little bit more pressure in the middle and then release. And so that creates these very simple leaf shapes. And again, for these leaves, we're just going to um, just add them wherever you have negative space. So you can have larger ones, you can have smaller ones, narrow, thicker, um, really just like a doodle, you know, wherever you see a little space you want to fill, you can just bring your brush over there and add a little leaf. Uh, and fill that space. And just like we did with the roses, again, you want to make sure you alternate between smaller sizes and larger sizes, um, dark and light. And again, that's going to help build that sense of dimension and that more professional look in your painting. To wrap it up, I'll add a couple of overlapping leaf shapes, um, add some darker values here in the tip as well. Ooh, that looks nice. And uh, artists, don't forget to sign your painting and we're done. So I hope this video was fun and got you in the mood for Valentine's Day. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.